Hi, I'm Jim Gordon at Bears and Gordon. One of the questions that get asked by clients is what's the difference between a trip and fall and a slip and fall? And that's an important distinction. A trip and fall is usually you're gonna fall on an uneven surface. It might be an uneven stair, it might be an uneven paver, something like that. That's important because there may be a violation of a standard out there, especially when you're talking about a staircase or something like that. There's standards out there. There's OSHA standards, there's building code standards that say what has to be involved in a stair. And we would have an expert go out and look at that and determine if the rise and run is the correct size. We've actually had this happen more than once and it turned out they did not have the right size of the rise and run and it made people fall down. We had a case in, involving a failure to pull out a uh, bleacher and the person fell because the bleacher wasn't fully pulled out and they did not see it and they fell further down and broke their ankle. A slip and fall is going to be usually on a, a substance, water, oil, um, can, it could also be a substance like shampoo at a store. So that's important because that's what's called in the law a transitory substance. And there's a lot of law about transitory substances because Publix and Winn-Dixie have had a lot of issues with that over the years and have had a lot of case law involving Publix cases and Winn-Dixie that they fought to basically fight transitory substances. And that's important because the issue in those cases is was the area cleaned how often was it cleaned and was there what's called a mode of operation by the store? That's not a big, as big an issue in a trip and fall case as a slip and fall case. So those issues have to be looked at at a slip and fall case as what were the issues involved. Both of the cases, especially if it happens at a commercial business, you want to go to an attorney right away, call us right away because we want to get a copy of the video. The video of the surveillance or the store video is going to show what happened in that trip or slip and fall. And especially in a transitory substance, water, or some other type of substance case, we might be able to go back and figure out when it was actually spilled and why it wasn't cleaned up. So if it had been a long time, that's gonna help your case. Problem is, if you wait more than 15 days to go to an attorney, or even more than 10 days, because a lot of times that video is gone in 15 days, we need to get a letter out to that business, tell them to preserve the video and make sure it gets preserved. Otherwise it may never be available. So that's very important in transitory subsidy cases because we want the video of the incident, but also video of what happened before the incident to find out when the actual spill took place. So sometimes people will call us and say, they'll, they'll call and say, I've had a trip and fall at a, a store and we ask them what happened. And it turns out they tripped potentially on their own two feet. They stubbed, some, they stubbed their toe, did something like that. Just because you fall out of business doesn't mean the business is liable. The business is only liable if there's negligence by the business. And that's why it's important if it's a trip and the trip happens to be because you fell and you did something yourself or a slip based on a substance. What also is really important is to find out what that substance was. So people will have slip and falls and they, they'll get embarrassed and they'll walk up and they won't figure out what caused the slip and fall. And if they come in and tell us or they come in and testify later on, I don't know what caused the slip and fall, a judge is gonna very well dismiss that case on what's called summary judgment and say there's not enough evidence of what the issue was, what the substance was to hold that business liable. So it's important after a slip and fall to look down, see what you fell on, see what caused you to slip and report that to the store. Now the difference in a trip, if you just tripped and it's because something you did and, or you tripped over your own two feet, just because it happened in a business, and we do get these calls occasionally, that business is not liable for your injury. The best thing you can do when you slip on a substance is figure out what the substance is. Number one, if you can take pictures, if you think about it, you have your phone, take pictures, especially if it's, if it's a clear substance, because a clear substance is gonna be harder to see than a dirty substance. Also, you wanna take a picture to see if anyone else has walked through it. That becomes an issue because that, that the business should have been on notice if there's other uh, skid marks, other people falling in that area, things like that, because it's gonna show, if it shows dirt, things like that, or a footprint, that means it's been there a while. Um, if the cases look at, it's kind of, the, did you slip on a yellow banana or did you slip on a brown banana? If you slipped on a brown banana, we know it's been there a long time and that's what caused your slip and it's been there long enough that the, the Publix or Winn-Dixie or the grocery store should have picked it up. You fall on a yellow banana, there's a good chance it had just fallen on the floor and maybe the, the store did not have opportunity to clean it up. So that's gonna be the difference. The more you can document or the more you can have the store document, but I'd certainly recommend you document more than the store because what happens is you fill out an incident report 
case law for the most part considers those incident reports to be what's called work product and we can never get those from the store unless you've signed off on them. But if it's just done by the store, it's considered work product and we'll never be able to see what the store said the substance was. So it's really important for you to try to figure it out if you can. Once you step outside of a business, it depends where you're at. If you're at a small office and it's just a one, a one building office, it's very well likely owned by that, that business and they would be liable for anything that happens outside once you step outside the doors. But the reality is most businesses are leased, especially if you had a strip mall, a, a Publix Plaza, something like that. Once you step outside the Publix, if you fall in the parking lot or even on the walkway outside, the Publix, usually that's owned by the, the company that owns the plaza and they're responsible for the trip and fall or the slip and fall outside rather than the business. And that's an important distinction. That's why you want to talk to an attorney about who's actually liable. The other thing that happens is sometimes there might even be a cleaning company or a company that's blowing leaves or doing landscaping that has an agreement with the business. And we need to look into those agreements as your attorney to see who is liable because Businesses have what's called an indemnity agreement with various um, leaseholders within the, within the plaza. And we need to get all of those to figure out who would be responsible for the incident. Sometimes people slip when it rains and that becomes an issue. If you walk into a business that's wet outside, you know it's been raining and you walk in and you slip and fall because it's raining, you bring in water. That's gonna be a difficult, if not impossible case to prove. There are sometimes issues where they don't put out mats. You walk into a business and they don't have a mat out or the mat doesn't work or it's been bunched up because it's old and they, they don't have a correct mat in there. That can be looked into. And again, we'd wanna get the surveillance to show you walked in and the mat was askew and it was up and, and then look at, we can get a copy of a picture or look at the mat itself and find out the back was no longer secure. It was old and that's why it kept getting moved up and that's why you tripped and fell but that's why that video is so important or at least documenting exactly what happened after the incident. When you slip and fall in a substance at a business, it really needs to be looked at how long it was there. And the law says it's a reasonable amount of time that it was there, which is not really a great standard for all of us to sit there and say it's been there 15 minutes, 30 minutes, is that enough time? And they have to have a mode of operation to clean it up. It really comes down to, would the business have had the opportunity to clean it up? Were they, should, did they know or should they have known about the substance on the floor? Because sometimes they might have just been reported to them, they're on their way back to clean it up when you actually walk through it and fall. And that's gonna be a harder case to prove than they hadn't made it out there, they knew about it, they were just busy, they didn't, they didn't make it out there for 20 minutes and you can prove that with another witness or something like that or another employee. The hardest part about trip and falls and slip and falls at businesses is a lot of times my clients will say, I talked to you know, this employee Art and Art told me he was gonna help me and they never get Art's last name or they just say I talked to an employee and what happens is a lot of times the business doesn't identify that employee on the uh, incident report or that employee comes in and testifies the incident did not happen in the way that our client says it happened and that's why it's so important to document it yourself and that's hard to do the hardest thing to do after you have a slip and fall you, you, you slip and fall you, you're embarrassed but if you're really hurt or you think you're hurt that's when you got to start taking out your phone you got to start taking video and or pictures of what caused you to trip or slip and fall. Because even though you're embarrassed, if you're embarrassed and you walk away and then you try to come back and figure out what it is, it might be gone. It might be cleaned up if it was a transitory substance, water, shampoo, something, soda, something like that. If it's a trip and fall, it's a little bit easier because they, because they probably haven't fixed the area. But I've certainly seen incidents where someone falls over a pole that's been left on the ground or left a few inches off the ground and by the time they go back, the pole's been removed and they can't prove what caused them to trip. And then it becomes almost an impossible problem to prove what happened in that incident. That's why it's so important to do it right away. If you're discussing whether it's a trip and fall or slip and fall, when is that important? It's probably not as important in front of a jury because that can be cleaned up by myself or whoever your attorney is. They can say, didn't you really mean this or didn't you mean that? 
I would say the biggest problem is when you report it to the doctors because you'll sometimes the doctors will put in the information incorrectly. So you need to be really clear when you talk to your medical providers exactly what happened in the incident and tell them exactly how the incident happened because in trip and falls and slip and falls, that can become a big issue because sometimes the medical provider does it wrong, but sometimes more importantly, it's reported wrong to them. And that's why it's important to use the proper word. I tripped over this type of uneven surface. I tripped over this stair. I tripped over this thing that was left, or I slipped on this substance, or I slipped on this thing on the ground and my foot went out from under me rather than I tripped because that becomes an issue when you were in litigation, it's, you, you, it'll say, well, gosh, you told the doctor you slipped. You're telling me you tripped over this and you stumbled and tripped, but you told the doctor you slipped. So that little distinction is important, but it's so important when dealing with the medical providers because I know when I was a defense attorney, that's where I went. And I know that's where I first go when I'm looking at a case for my client and we try to clear that up. Sometimes we'll have people call and say, I was following someone through a, a store and they spilled a soda or water right in front of me and I slipped and fell. Like I said, that's a difficult case to win against the business because they really didn't have an opportunity to clean it up. But then the question is, well, can I sue that individual? In theory, you potentially could sue that individual for their negligence and not capping their water and letting it spill or not capping their soda and letting it spill. The problem is there's no insurance that an individual is gonna have that's gonna cover that and you're gonna to have to get a judgment against an individual, which is very difficult to collect. So those are not usually cases that our office is gonna take or most offices are gonna take because it's almost an impossibility to get a recovery against that individual. If you've had an incident at a business, a trip and fall or a slip and fall, give us a call at Beers and Gordon. We do these cases all the time. We know how to handle these cases. It's important that you do it right away because video is so important in these cases. Evidence is so important that you call us right away so we can start gathering that evidence for you. So please give us a call, Beers and Gordon, www.beersandgordonlaw.com.